There are two new important technologies in CS5 that allow us to create images with a more natural look, making it look painted with watercolors or oils. The first one are the new bristle tips. The traditional types of brushes have tips that allow us to change the roundness, hardness, and spacing. But the new bristle tips give us more natural type brushes with actual bristles or hairs. You'll notice when I choose a bristle tip, I also get a little HUD up here that shows me what that brush looks like. And using a pen and stylus, or a stylus on a tablet, if I change the orientation of the pen, you can also see how the image updates to show me that. Notice too how the cursor changes to show me bristles. Now, the bristles are going to paint different ways. For example, I can choose quickly here from different types of bristle brushes, and then I can change their qualities. I can change the shape from, say, a round point to a flat fan. And they give me very different looks, which I can preview down here. What's nice about this is I can also change the bristles. For example, I can change the number of bristles. If I reduce it, I get fewer bristle strokes. And if I increase it, I get a lot more for a thicker stroke. I can adjust the length of the bristles, which is also useful if I'm just going to click and tap. And by changing the orientation of my pen, I can make for somewhat longer strokes. I can adjust the thickness of each bristle. So I'll reduce the number of bristles down. And you can see they're much more thick. And I can adjust the stiffness so they're not as flexible when I move my stylus around. And finally, I can also change the angle of the bristles. So make them nice and loose and fairly long. And this gives us good control. Now these bristle tips can also be applied to our regular brushes here. And they can be applied to the new mixer brush. Now the mixer brush is really cool because it actually allows you to blend colors as you're painting as though you had wet paints or inks. I'm going to go ahead and start off and make sure that I have my foreground color is loaded up with green. And I'm going to go with a mixer brush that's going to be set to the dry setting first. I'm going to tell it to load the color each stroke and clean the brush after each stroke. So it starts off with a nice clean green. Now when it's set to dry, when you brush, it's just going to brush the way you normally do. It's not going to have any sort of interaction with the pixels. It just paints right over them. But one thing you can adjust is the load value. If I bring it down to 1%, you'll see that the paint ultimately runs out and the stroke gets fader or fades as it goes. And if I increase the load a little bit more, it'll go ahead and let the ink last a little bit longer before it fades out. Now, when I introduce a wetness value, I can also change the mix of the foreground color, what I've loaded onto my brush, with the colors that are already here on my image. So if I switch to, say, a moist brush, which gives me a 10% wetness, a small 5% load, and a 50% mix, you'll see I get some of the green mixing with the white on the background, but as I move over the blues and the reds, you'll see how it blends those in to the colors that I'm painting with. Now, adjusting the wetness, by increasing it, you get more of a blend of the colors. And with the mix, you control how much of the foreground color and how much the background color is dominant. With a mix of 0%, it's going to use a lot of the foreground color and less of the background color. But with a mix of 100%, it's only going to pick up the background color and ignore what's loaded on the brush. So if I start on white, it's going to keep painting with white. If I start on red, it'll paint with a red. But it completely ignores the brush load color. So let's go ahead and start seeing what we can do with some of these interesting effects. I'm going to go ahead and close this image. And I'm going to my new mini bridge panel. And I'm going to navigate to my desktop to my images folder. And I'm going to go ahead and open this portrait. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it not look like a photograph so much as a painting. I'll go ahead and start off with my mixer brush. And I'm going to choose one of my tips here. I might go with this flat round blunt and change it. Make it a little bit more, uh, make it more of a round angle. And we'll increase the bristles a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. If I press and hold Z to jump to my zoom tool temporarily, notice I can do a scrubby zoom. So if I click and drag to the right, it zooms in on that area where I clicked. And then I release the Z, and there's my brush. So now I can just come in here and start brushing over 
And you see how it picks up and it's blending with the colors that are already there because of my 100% mix. In other words, ignore that green. Just pick up the colors that are already in the image. And depending on where I start the stroke, it picks up those colors and blends them down. So if I start in the brighter area, I get brighter paint. And this allows me to come in with some nice fine control over these. And I'll do some quick changes, just some very broad strokes here quickly. And then I'll be adjusting my brush down so it's a little bit smaller later. Now this is giving me my flick pan because I have OpenGL installed. And this allows me to just kind of flick the image with my cursor, just kind of stroke it so it goes, and then have it release. This was actually introduced in CS4. But I'll come in here and just kind of stroke over all these things quickly, get some good basic stroke. I'm going to try to stay away from the areas that are going to re require a little bit more fine tuning, and just stick to the larger swashes. And we just keep stroking away. Again, where you click and start is where it starts picking up the colors. So if you want the brighter, pick in the brighter. If you want darker, start in the darker section. And your strokes don't have to be very long, but just by using these bristle tips and changing the angle, we can start adjusting the way that the brush is working and blending those colors together. Picking them up and mixing them, doing a pretty nice job there. Okay, now I'm going to adjust my brush size down a little bit here. Make it a little bit smaller so we have a little bit finer control in here on the lips. And again, I don't want to make it look too natural, but I don't want to change the angles too much either. I want to keep it a little bit more proportioned correctly, because after all, we do want to recognize the portrait. You see again, by starting with the bright areas, pick up the brighter colors and the darker areas to blend in the darker colors. We just kind of move our way around the picture. Let's get our hands here. Notice the very bright highlights here. So we want to try to keep that, but at the same time, make sure that we still keep the differentiation between the fingers. So we're going to use much smaller strokes in there. You can see just in a matter of minutes, a minute or two here, I'm immediately changing what's started off as a photograph and making it look much more interesting. Okay, I'll come up here around the ear, kind of blend these with shorter strokes. Keep a little bit of that green fringing in there. I guess that's a little reflection from the background. And again, trying to keep the tonal values fairly equivalent to the areas that they came from. We don't have any sharp edges because that'll make it look like the photograph. So I'm going to blend those around as well. So everything is treated as though the paint is wet and we can blend these colors very, very nicely together. Give it a much more interesting look. Okay, I'm going to reduce my brush down now significantly, go to a finer tip, and I'm going to have a lot more bristles so it's a little bit more consistent. And I want to reduce my brush size as well, make it much smaller. Come in here and blend things a little bit better. And again, you don't want to keep everything perfectly accurate. You do want to have a little bit of slop 
so it does look a little bit more artificial. So we're going to blend those sharp pixels in. And just keep blending around, blending around, blending around. Get some of that darker pupil back in there. Sort of blend these around in here, a little bit more in here as well. As you can see, painting can sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit of time. It's a lot easier to do this if you have a tablet. Because then you can actually make the brush strokes more easy. And you have a little bit more control than if you have just a regular mouse. Go ahead and blend those around a little bit more too. And again, using the mixer brush, so it extends the colors out. We'll clean that up a little bit. We'll get rid of some of that yellow. Make sure to pick up that brighter color, brighter tones there. Kind of stroke that back up. And you can see by zooming in and using a much smaller brush, you have much finer control over the way that these colors are mixing together. Let's get rid of that, paint that white back down on there a little bit. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. And you can see we've immediately made a big, big difference. So the last thing you might want to do is just come down here and work on the jacket and the hat. But you can see by using the mixing brushes to blend all these colors in and changing to different types of brushes with our different tips, we get a much more natural look that makes this look painted instead of photographed.